How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca and I am a final year medical student studying in Canada. So a few weeks ago now on my Instagram account, I dropped a little bit of a hint on you guys that in addition to in my final year, getting ready for residency applications and studying for the Canadian board exams, the LMCC Canadian boards, I was also considering at the time writing the American medical board exams. Now I'll get into my reasons why I actually want to write the exam in its own separate video probably at a later date. But the first thing that I noticed was that because I am a Canadian student, I was totally lost in the beginning regarding the process of getting licensed to practice medicine in both Canada and the United States, specifically for the United States stuff because we don't get any presentations on it. I had absolutely no idea where to start. So what I decided to do was put together my own video today, something that I knew that I would have liked to have when I was first starting off looking up a lot of this information. But today we are going to be going over the five things that you need to know about the USMLE, the United States Medical Licensing Exam, if you're you're first starting off about the topic with a heavy emphasis on step one. Now, the first thing you need to know is a general overview of the process. The USMLE, the United States Medical Licensing Exam, is actually broken up into three different steps. There's step one, step two, and step three. From the day that you write step one, you will have seven years to pass the remainder of the USMLE exams, so that if you are writing step one, you are only doing so with the intention to eventually pass all of the other steps. And I think that's a pretty big misconception with some of the students that aren't specifically from down in the States, people just think that you just write step one. You need to write them all if you intend to eventually make it all the way through the USMLE exams. Now, step one is an eight hour, seven section, multiple choice exam with no more than 280 questions, which takes place all over the course of a single day and is usually written by medical students after finishing their second year, their preclinical years, and before they actually start on rotations on the wards. Step two, CK, or the clinical knowledge section of step two is a nine hour exam broken down into eight sections with a total of around 318 questions. I'm going to fact check that. And normally medical students down in the United States will take the step two CK sometime in their fourth year. And finally, step three is the last of the USMLE exams. It is a two day exam consisting of more than 500 questions. And I think 12 or more computer based scenarios over the course of those two days. It is usually written by students after at least one year into their residency training. Okay, so perfect. Now that we got that all out of the way, let's talk about why you would even want to subject yourself to all of these exams in the first place. And the the way that I see it, there's really only three reasons why anyone would possibly consider writing the USMLE exams. The first one is that you want to do residency down in the States. It doesn't matter if you're from Canada, you, the United States, an international student. If you want an American residency spot, you need to write the USMLE exams. And that's specifically for an allopathic stream residency program. If you want to do an osteopathic residency program, a lot of the DO students end up writing the complex exam, which qualifies them to do the osteopathic residency programs but to expand their options and in all fairness, the uh, DO students actually more often than not will also write the USMLE test as well. The second reason to write the exams is that you want to do residency in your own country and then do additional training down in the States, such as a fellowship for some of the more competitive surgical specialties or additional training in whatever specialty you're getting into that is only available down in the States. They do have on average a larger variety of additional training programs compared to some other countries. And finally, the last reason why you would consider writing the exams as if at some point you could see yourself working as a doctor down in the States. And this one's a little bit tricky because there are some states that will credit Canadian residency training as equivalent when you move down to those states, but some states will not credit Canadian residency training. And then things might change in the future. But finally, the H-1B working visa when you're in the process of immigrating down to the States is actually made possible through having the US MLE exams. Without those exams, the immigration process is supposedly a lot Harder. Next, we'll go ahead and move on to scoring. And from this point on, we're going to be talking specifically about step one, because I'm guessing that if you already wrote step one, at this point in the video, you no longer need the introductory course. You're already looking into step two and step three. You probably got a good handle of what's been going on so far. Okay, so here's the deal. The scoring for step one is another one of those weird abstract scoring methods. It really reminded me of the MCAT. And at least at first glance, I just feel like there's better ways to do this. But anyways, for the sake of stating the accurate information, your score on step one, hypothetically, could be anywhere from one 
to 300. So the passing score on the US MLE Step 1 is a 194, and it's estimated that in order to get a passing score, you would theoretically need to get between 60 and 70% of all the questions on your test right that day. The average score on Step 1 though, at least according to this last cycle, was a 232 with a standard deviation of 19 points, which means that the vast majority of students who write Step 1 will pass the exam. The problem though is that in the past, your Step 1 score was probably the most important important factor determining which specialty you eventually matched into, with the more competitive specialties requiring their applicants to have higher scores on average. Now, the issue is that starting in January of 2022, it is heavily suspected, and it was actually announced, that the USMLE Step 1 will be made entirely pass-fail as for scoring the exam. Now, previously I had said that the scoring on the USMLE Step 1 to me was just kind of funny, but to put it in perspective, why I, I kind of laugh when, when I was reading up about it. Hypothetically, the highest score that you could get on the USMLE Step 1 is a 300. However, to the best of our knowledge, a 300 score on the exam has never ever been reported. The highest USMLE score average for any specialty was plastic surgery with an average score of 249, which is a pretty impressive score. If you score a 260 though, this is a score that is going to be so impressive that you've basically opened the doors to most programs that you're interested in. A score of 270 though makes you a legend in medical school circles with anything between 270 and 275 being so uncommon that you almost never hear of it and these individuals that are able to score 280 and above are, are basically looked at as ghosts. You hear about them from time to time, no one's really ever seen one though. Just remember though this was before, coming up now when they make the test pass or fail it's really not going to matter how high you score anymore and especially if you are a student that did residency training somewhere else and you just want to keep your options open so that eventually you could go down to the states if you want to your score is really not going to matter you just need to pass the step one exam point number four is just how long you should be studying for the exam how long most people study for the exam from what i could find this varies pretty intensely between students in the past it's been anywhere between one and six months depending on three different factors number one what score did you want if you wanted a higher score you need to study for longer number two how confident were you in the material going into your study session if you tried really 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 hard and your marks were very high all throughout your pre-clerkship years, then you probably didn't need to study as much as someone that was just getting by medical school. And then finally, the last thing is how intense can you study? Does your school give you some sort of dedicated study period where you could study every single day? Or do you have a ton of other stuff going on at the same time and you got to sneak in your studying whenever you can? In any case though, the two most important resources that almost everybody will tell you that you need to use when you're studying for the USMLE, number one, is your first aid for the USMLE book right here. It's about 800 pages of content review and everything that you need to know about the exam. It even breaks down what you need to know specifically in terms of how the sections are laid out and the study process. It's kind of like a similar book as the MCAT prep books. But then in addition to the content review, you also need some sort of question pack. And then by far, everyone will tell you that the single best resource for question banks is the UWorld question banks, which are more than 3,500 questions. And they say that on average, you should go through that entire 3,500 questions questions and then do the revisions for that as well. There's also some other resources that people would highly recommend. The two most common if we're going to make like a tier list. So you got the USMLE uh, first aid. Also, you got the UWorld question banks. And then right below that, you have Pathoma, which is another very, very important resource if you have the time. And then right after that would probably be Sketchy Medical, which has really found favor in some medical students these days. And then finally, the fifth point that you need to know about the USMLE is the breakdown for step one. As I already said before, it is a seven section, eight hour exam. Each of the different sections, you're limited to one hour, and in no one hour block can you have more than 40 multiple choice questions. Now, in terms of what's actually on the test itself, there's a few different ways that you could break it down, and the actual USMLE website does break it down into a few different ways. But the 10 disciplines that they will draw their questions from are behavioral sciences, biochemistry and nutrition, genetics, gross anatomy and embryology, and I really hate embryology, but histology and cell biology, immunology, microbiology, pathology, pharmacology, and physiology. I'm, I'm, I think that's 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10 sections. Okay, so now here's the deal. Traditionally in the past, step one, especially if you were aiming for a top score on step one, has been regarded by many as one of the most important and difficult tests that they've ever written in their entire life, even more difficult than the MCAT, which is notorious for breaking students mentally. But if you really don't care how high of a score you get on step one, then in my opinion, you should just go ahead and study and write the exam if at some point you think that you're gonna need it. The way that I see it right now, I would rather go ahead and study for this 
stuff while I actually learned at least some of it because down here in Canada we really don't put much emphasis on biochemistry and a few of those topics that are tested for on step one but I'd rather do it now than four years into practice if I decide that I need it to have to sit down and relearn embryology that would suck. I have a few other reasons why I personally want to write the exam for myself that I will talk about with you guys in the future. But in the meantime, I really hope that this video was helpful for you in understanding the USMLE process and a little bit more specifically in step one, if you guys want to write that exam at some point. But we will see you guys all in the next one. Best of luck with studying. If you have any questions about anything at all, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. I love nerding out about statistics, so I promise you, I learned a lot more about this exam than I actually had time to put into this video. We'll see you guys all in the next one. Everyone take care.